Hey, this is Ray with CircuitSalad.com, and I'm here today to show you my pointless creation, which I call the McTesla. Yes, it's a McDonald's-themed Tesla coil. It's all yellow with a nice arch there. Um, this is a simple half-bridge, non-resonant primary uh, Tesla coil. It's made out of all 3D printed forms. The toroid, which is wrapped in aluminum tape, is 3D printed. The coil form for the secondary is 3D printed and it is five inches tall uh, with a three inch diameter in the bottom and an almost five inch diameter on the top. So it's an inverted cone. And then of course the little spacers for the primary, which is just number 16 gauge automotive hookup wire. And then of the uh, casing here that holds the control board. And then as well, I've got a matching, get it over here, uh, controller for the interrupter, which has a little display, and we'll turn that on in just a second, I'll show you how that works. So before I power this thing up, I'll say that all the design data for this will be on my blog, Circuit Salad. Dot com and uh, it uses some techniques that I developed for a half bridge driver board uh, that's very efficient it doesn't need a whole lot of heat sinking and can uh, make some nice long sparks this coil has a five inch tall secondary and as I'll show you in a minute it can make in excess of nine to ten inch sparks. Uh, the bottom of that screw is a little above nine inches and the top of that screw is about ten and a half inches away from the uh, point there, the discharge breakout point. So let's uh, take this here and flip this over. Normally it's screwed in here, but so you could look at the board. This is like a little three and a half by three and a half inch board. And I've got two uh, power MOSFETs. Um, there's one that I've been using that I like, but I've been having trouble finding it. And it seems scarce, and I got a couple that didn't seem to work quite right, so I've moved to a new one, which I'll describe on my blog, that works great. It's a little more expensive at five bucks a pop, but as you can see, my heat sinking is very minimal. That's because of my phasing control that allows me to uh, ensure zero voltage switching. Uh, so there's very little overlap of current and voltage across the switch. And then all the 12 volt uh, control voltages and supply voltages are created from this little commodity AC to DC power module I got off Amazon two for seven bucks so I just designed the board to fit around that little dinky module uh, what else yeah, I think that's about it uh, I'll have the schematic and the layout and all that on my blog uh, it's pretty straightforward half bridge um, other than the phase and control so let's go ahead and plug this thing up Okay, so let's make some sparks. So I'm going to turn on my controller interrupter here. And you can see I've got it on low, and you can hear the Tesla coil sparking. So let's look at that. So that's on low. So we've got it up to pretty close to max. Let's get on the max there. So that's about, when it hits the bottom of that screw, it's nine and a half inches. So that's at a one hertz. So you get the longest arcs when you do these rapid pulses. There was a 10 inch or so spark. So you can see it's really cranking now.
So as you get faster, the sparks don't get as long. Now you can hear it zero beating with the 60 hertz. So I'm turning down the power now. There's really low power. So at this setting, it's got a maximum duty cycle of about 50%. Uh, you can run it continuous, but it's kind of hard on the power supply circuitry, circuitry, not really the MOSFETs. Hertz at maximum power, which is a uh, 50% duty cycle. And I'm just going there. All right, we'll turn it off and unplug it. I'm gonna pop this off. Yeah, the coil's a little bit warm. So now let's feel these MOSFETs. Eh, they're warm. Uh, after all that, they're warm, but they're not too hot. They run very efficiently, so you basically could probably use a little more heat sinking, but they're warm to the touch, but not so hot you can't hold them. Anyway, that's the McTesla, and Detailed design information will be available on my blog, Circuit Salad.